Hello all, this is Neil from Edureka and welcome to this interesting session on what is Ethereum. Now those of you who have heard about blockchain would have also heard about Ethereum because these are some of the most popular technologies and keywords out there in the market today. So in this session let's try to address what exactly is Ethereum, what makes it stand out among all the other implementations of blockchain that are out there. So let's move forward and look at the agenda for the session. Now we'll be first trying to address with the most essential question which is what is Ethereum. Following that we'll talk about the various features of Ethereum which makes it quite popular. Following which we'll be talking about smart contracts and we'll also look at decentralized autonomous organization. Now smart contracts and DAO short form for decentralized autonomous organization are two of the most popular interests among the Ethereum domain as well. Now let's move forward and look at the first topic of this session which is what is Ethereum. Ethereum is actually an open source public distributed ledger system which is based on the original core blockchain idea itself. Now it also has few additional features like smart contracts which is basically an application. Now how it is we'll be looking at ahead. Now when I talk about Ethereum one of the most fundamental and important question that should come to your mind is that how is it different from Bitcoin blockchain. Now let's look at some of the key differences here. The first and the most important difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is that the concept or the core idea or fundamental idea which bought these implementations out in the world today. Now the core idea if most of you are not aware of was to bring a decentralized digital money into the world that was not governed by anyone and give the people the complete freedom to decide and work around with it. Now there were a lot of challenges with respect to the existing monetary system which we are not going to be discussing as part of this session but this was the core idea of implementing Bitcoin blockchain. But at the same time when you come down to Ethereum although it is a derivative of Bitcoin blockchain it's often referred to as the second generation of blockchain because here people have understood what blockchain can be used for and have started using the various capabilities beyond the cryptocurrency market as well. The core idea of Ethereum was to build a world computing system. Now this would be a decentralized computing system where all the resources would be shared across as well as the computing effort in itself would also be shared. So it's something that would be a world's first decentralized distributed computing system. Now when you come down the original idea of blockchain was conceptualized in 2008 and the initial release was in Jan 2009. But Ethereum's conceptualization started in 2013 and the first implementation came out in July 2015. Although the method of release of these coins were initially different whereas in Bitcoins you had to mine to get Bitcoins and in Ethereum they came up with a monetary system which was basically through an ICO which is an initial coin investment system. Now you hear a lot about ICOs and it's something that's gaining a lot of popularity. So if you guys are interested in ICO do let us know maybe we can try and come up with a video on ICOs as well. Now apart from this one of the other key factors would be the amount of transactions each of them can process as well. Whereas Bitcoin blockchain can process only about 3 to 4 transactions per second. Ethereum blockchain can process about 15 transactions per second. And again the time that is taken for creating a block also is slightly different. An average block in blockchain gets created every 10 minutes whereas in Ethereum it's about 12 to 15 seconds. Also the reward system is also quite different whereas in blockchain it's about 12.5 bitcoins. In Ethereum it's only about 5 ethers. Now going forward let's look at some of the key features which make Ethereum so popular or the key factors which make Ethereum so effective and popular as well. Now if you ask me these are the four foundational pillars which make Ethereum so effective that's out there. Firstly Ethereum is a blockchain based implementation. Thereby it does require any form of monetary system thereby you have its own internal cryptocurrency which is Ether. Apart from that it came up with the idea of smart contracts which is basically an application that would run on blockchain and process all the information present on the blockchain as well. It also brought in the idea of a decentralized organization that is an organization that broke the foundational knowledge of a governing organization as you can see in the modern society as well. It also helped to introduce the concept of smart property wherein you could digitally transfer your property without having to face any of the hassles for exchanging the property or validating the documents as well. Let's talk about each one of them one by one. Let's talk about the cryptocurrency which is Ether. Now the most common Ethereum's cryptocurrency that you would be seeing out there is Ether 
okay which is actually listed as eth on most cryptocurrency exchange and is something that's gaining a lot of popularity of recently as well now why a separate cryptocurrency when there was bitcoins already now the idea here is to provide for the transaction fees as well as the computational service that you would run on ethereum network itself now there are various applications that will be running on this network people put a lot of information we will customize the ethereum network for their needs and necessities as well so for all the operations that you would be running there would be some amount of tokens that are going to be consumed to perform these computations so these tokens are generally referred to as gas so now gas in itself is something that you pay for okay so basically the transaction fees that you would be charged would be for purchasing that gas as well so again any sort of computation that you want to perform okay you need to buy gas and again that's where ethereum comes so if you want to perform any operations on ethereum you need to buy gas which is basically going to be deducted in form of ether as well now if you're providing a high transaction fees then basically the chance of your operation getting completed faster would be high because again this is something that miners would take as profit as well but let's say if you provide too little a gas then the transaction in itself may fail as well it's completely left up to you to decide on the gas used for your computational process okay now going forward let's talk about what exactly are smart contracts because we've been talking and hearing about smart contracts for a while now so let me just address this to give you a standard definition a smart contract basically is a computerized transaction protocol which in turn executes a term of a protocol but in terms of a simple word it's basically an application wherein you write a standard contract rules and it gets executed without having any change because anything on the blockchain is completely immutable this is something that is the core foundation of blockchain so if i try to even manipulate a contract it is not possible let's take the example of alice and bob who actually have formed a physical contract and they're trying to put the information on a permission blockchain as well this in turn would actually lead to a smart contract okay now to give you another simple example let's say i'm buying a house from either of you okay now what happens is that you give me the money and finally i decide not to transfer the property then it becomes a loss for you because firstly there could be a challenge that i would say that i do not receive the money or something like that, or any situation like that this can be completely avoided firstly by putting it on blockchain because the transaction that i would be taking from you would be completely visible and i can ensure and blockchain in itself is immutable so this cannot be rejected or it cannot be falsified as well apart from that let's say i am going to write a smart contract that says once i have received the money from you transfer the property from me to you that would get automatically executed when i would have a confirmation of payment from you okay so this gets executed but let's say if i write the condition that only and only if i get 5000 ethers will i transfer the property then what would happen is until and unless i get that 5000 ethers the transaction would not take place that is the contract would not get executed as well so this in turn also ensures that falsification from both ends are not made okay so this is something that's quite realistically and since it's out there and open wherein no human intervention can manipulate it this becomes a trustless system wherein you don't have to put your trust on someone else thereby making it quite easy for operations to work and quite transparent as well now for those of you who are looking for an opportunity in blockchain domain this is what you need to look out for because today there is a huge demand for people who can write smart contracts as such okay now let me give you a sample idea of what a smart contract would look like so this is a sample contract that you are seeing okay now this is a ide which is remix ide okay now by default you also get a ballot program here i also have a hello world program written here So even when you see here, there are various syntax coming here. Now I don't want to go in detail with respect to this because this is written in a programming language called Solidity. Okay, Solidity in itself is one of the most popular programming language for writing smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. But since there are various implementations of Ethereum that people use, there are different languages that are also preferred as well with respect to that. Same. So definitely smart contracts and ethereum is something that you should really look out for if you're looking for a developer job role okay now this is just the simple environment now one idea here is when i look at the run option it asks me what kind of environment do i want to use a virtual environment do i want to inject a web3 or a web3 provider as well now usually what happens is let's say if i'm trying to emulate it i would be using a web3 provider where i would provide it with account details as well 
So if you see in the account, it has the public key of the account as well as it tells me the number of ethers that it has as well. Same time, I can also specify the limit of gas that has to be used for any operation and the value as well. Now, V, Gay, Fini and Ether are the different levels of Ether that you can see. Like how you have a Satoshi, which is the smallest unit in Bitcoin, you have a V that is present in Ether as well. Now, coming back, let's go back to our presentation. Now, here, the next and the most interesting part of Ethereum that I feel and would be the future for most blockchain based industries would be the decentralized autonomous organization. Now, talking about DAOs, DAOs are basically organizations or group of people who, which completely exist entirely on the blockchain itself and are governed by the various protocols of blockchain. Now, what you need to understand is that blockchain is an open source technology which can be manipulated as per the user's requirement. So let's say if I'm forming an organization of various peoples, I can ensure that we come to a common understanding and then I can build this organization. First itself, I define these protocols. First itself, I create an understanding and then I create this organization. And then what I can do is basically I can create a unison of multiple long term smart contracts which are present between these people itself. So any decision that needs to be made, any operation that needs to be done would all be written in smart contracts and these all would come together as well. Now, basically what they are is they are designed to hold on to the assets and use it in form of a voting system and manage their distribution as well. So let's say if there is someone who holds major assets, then he would have a higher priority as well. Now again, two or more entities within the DAO itself can interact with each other in a fully decentralized and automated fashion as well. So any communication thereby also is completely possible. And this is something that definitely happens on a regular basis as well. Now in a DAO, what you need to understand is that each action or a vote is represented by some form of transaction in that blockchain itself. Now, what you need to understand is that in case if any operation needs to be done, it will be in form for transaction as well. Now, again, to give you a quick idea, a group of people come and write smart contracts that govern that organization. People actually add funds to this DAO and are given tokens to represent their ownership as well. So more you invest, more tokens do you hold as well. And when the DAO begins to operate, each member proposes on how to spend this money as well. And based on the votes of the members, the proposal status is decided as such. Now, what you need to understand is that this is how going forward most organizations will definitely work out with because this makes it quite easier. And also at the same time, you do not need to depend on a third party. You do not have to have the trust factor to go forward as well, thereby making it quite easy and effective as such. OK, so with this, we come to a conclusion of this session. Now, if you are interested to learn more on Ethereum, feel free to write that in our comment section. And if there is something more that you would like to know about any of the blockchain implementations, please post that in our comment section below. So with that, thank you and goodbye.